welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast with your host, Chris Spurvey. Chris is dedicated to mentoring entrepreneurs and sales professionals through the fear of selling so they can confidently bring their product or service to market. Here's your host, Chris Spurvey. Jason, welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast. I'm grateful for your time. Chris, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, yeah. We've been coordinating this for a little while, so I'm yeah, super excited for the conversation. Yeah, exactly. And I can tell we have a lot in common. It sounds like we are using some of the similar tactics and tools mm-hmm. and so on. And I'm really, when I received your email as a suggestion to come on my show, uh, I got immediately uh, excited because of the way you had personalized it. Uh, and we'll get into why that's important and how you did that. Uh, before we jump in, why don't you tell people where you're, you're actually linked in today? Where, where, you, where do you live? Uh, where, where are you dialed in? So my wife, Sarah, and I, we run our business together. We just moved to Austin, Texas, actually, almost exactly a year ago from Portland, Oregon. Okay. So we, we moved to the sister weird city, the, the other yeah. weird city. And are you uh, from Portland, Oregon originally? Uh, I'm from Oregon, uh, actually from a small town called Brookings. So I grew up in a town of like 5,000 people. Yeah. But I sort of ventured you know, through college, made my way up to Portland to live the, uh, you know, the city life, right? It's a pretty small city, actually. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to get, you know, around younger people that were doing, you know, what we're doing, right? People yeah. that are, um, it's very hard. I just turned 30 this year, actually. One of the big challenges that I had in my 20s was how do you find other 20-year-olds that are really ambitious, that are into sales or marketing? And, mm. and those are the type of people that you want to surround yourself with, right? So yeah. that was sort of the reason for moving to Austin, actually, is they have a really, really great community of young business professionals here. Yeah, that's fabulous. So it sounds like you've had a growth mindset for a while. Did you, were you born with it or was it something you acquired as you went along? Well, I'll tell you, I've had that type of mindset for a while. It's something that, you know, my dad instilled in me is always be learning, right? I remember in first grade, uh, sitting down and, and, and he taught me like, Hey, don't just ask me for the answers when you're looking for something. He would always direct me back then. It was the Britannica encyclopedias, <laughs> <laughs> right? Did, did, so they, did they, the door salesman <laughs> sell those to you? <laughs> <laughs> it probably sold it to my dad. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I would say, so that was sort of the, the younger stuff, but, uh, actually meeting my wife, Sarah, she was really a big part of, cause she's from New York. Uh, you know, from a uh, group in, in Queens and moved to Westchester and where she was going to school is one of the top public schools, top 10 public schools in the United States. Wow. So she went to school with people that went to Stanford and then Harvard and are the doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs, stockbrokers, all this other stuff. And that was where she sort of pushed me to, well, hey, you know, like we can do better, you know, push yourself. Like we need to surround ourselves with people that are doing better than us. Right. Mm-hmm. And that sort of thing. So as of recent in the last couple of years, that's, it's really been more inspired by, uh, by my wife, Sarah. I love it. Yeah. We yeah. do become the product of uh, the certain number of people we hang around with and our Definitely. relations too. So yep. uh, that's, that's an interesting thought. It's been on my mind a lot lately. Uh, you know, I've, I've got the fortune of being, of working with some pretty decent hot, uh, people who, I don't know how to describe it. Like, I mean, I certainly place myself amongst them, but I do find they are definitely mentally stimulating and growth mindset. So I'm very fortunate on that. Uh, you know, and I've always been pretty fortunate in that way. Yep. Yeah. Cool stuff. So fill us in on your business. What's, uh, it's, uh, you know, what's, what, you, you also, I mentioned you had a PDF that people want to download. Uh, I just want to make sure we get that up front. Maybe fill us in on your business and tell us uh, where to download the PDF and what it's all about. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we started Blissful Prospecting really out of, and I suggest anyone starting a business starts with like, what are your personal pains and how can you scratch your own itch? Right? For really classic advice. Mm. And one of the things that, because we started in 2017, and one of the challenges that I had uh, leaving my corporate job in 2014, so I was working for a big construction company, I was, did sales, was a sales manager, was a VP of sales for them, and then they didn't have a marketing department, and I was creating all of the marketing materials and updating them for sales. Mm-hmm. So they're like, why don't you become our marketing director? So I started a call center and all this other stuff, and I did that for a couple of years, and I was like, I wanna go do this for other businesses. Cool. So in 2014, I left that business and yeah, you know, went through the usual thing a consultant goes through. Uh, you let everyone know about what you're going to do and that you're available for hire and then you reach out to people and things go really well for three to six months, but then the pipeline dries up. 
Yes. And I hit this point where I came from selling business to consumer to now having to do business to business for myself. And I didn't, honestly, I didn't know how to approach it because when I was in the construction industry, primarily we're doing like remodeling and house painting. I could just go door to door in a neighborhood or hire people to go door to door and we could get leads instantly. Mm. The equivalent of that with business to business I found out was outbound, right? How do you use tools like LinkedIn and email and, and now video? So, so I started reading books and doing all of that stuff for myself. And the reason why we click, created Blissful Prospecting is that I started realizing as a freelancer and consultant that a lot of the businesses I was uh, talking to that sold business to business were like, hey, that was a cool email. Like, do you do that for other clients? Like, could you do that for us? So I worked with four or five clients and we sort of validated the idea then. And that's where Blissful Prospecting came about is we really wanted to help the small and mid-sized business owner or the rep that's working for a small and mid-sized business with this because everyone's, and we talked about this before we started recording, yeah. everyone's so focused on enterprise right now. Yeah. And that's great, but that's where it's like so saturated. Yes. The small and mid-sized business is really the, the business that needs the most help with this. Mm. So we wanted to take a, you know, a company that may not be using Salesforce and have 10 different tools for stuff. And hey, how do we, I hate to say dumb down because that implies that it's I uh, inferior, <laughs> but really making it simple. Like you need a CRM, you need a tool to find data and you need some sort of sales engagement platform that helps you automate some of the mundane tasks. Mm. And that was really the premise behind starting Blissful Prospecting was, you know, training companies and individuals on how to do this and then also doing it for them yeah. um, as well. So that was a super long winded answer, but that's oh, sort, great. Great, <laughs> sort great of the backstory background. behind yeah. uh, starting it. And I guess the, the word blissful uh, is to imply it can be fun. It can be congruent with your values and, and uh, uh, you know, not feel like something sleazy, slimy, manipulative. It can, be, uh, it can be very much in line with the values of you and your prospect, hey? Would that yeah, be I, I mean, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because – the really what we're trying to show people is the new way of prospecting. Yeah. Um, the old way was make more cold calls. Uh, mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of rejection. You're going to make a lot of people angry um, and that sort of thing. And it was more like, Hey, play the numbers game. You need to be making your hundred cold calls a day. Well, the new way there's so much like free data out there and, and very inexpensive data for you to build to actually do a lot of research prior. So yes. you can research and build a list of companies that are a good fit. So, like when we do prospecting, we don't experience really much rejection in the form of why are you reaching out to me or, or this would not be able to help us. Like we just don't experience that because it's more methodical. Yeah. Certainly we get people telling us to unsubscribe and not interested, but it, it's really removing the grind from prospecting and it's looking at the phone as a tool. It's part of a cadence. It's not the entire cadence where you just right. cold call and hammer people. It's how can you warm them up with an email or a personalized video or a LinkedIn connection request. That's the new way of prospecting that can be fun if yeah. you do it correctly. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. And you know, it's for me personally, I kind of stumbled upon doing it and fell down and picked myself back up a couple of <laughs> many times. Yeah. Uh, but I kind of got into, I, I kind of learned through trial and error. So to know that there's a company like yours out there uh, that you can engage with that can kind of get you, uh, you, you you've kind of made all the mistakes and you're just help, helping people make sure they don't make the same mistakes. Uh, to know that's out there is pretty cool, right? Um, so what's working today? Is there, is there a formula that's working uh, today that you more than other formulas? Yeah. The, so the formula is tricky because it can, it can vary depending on, who you're reaching out to, how busy they are, how big the company is, et cetera. But there, there are some basics, uh, right, to prospecting that uh, I know for certain through our work of sending out literally hundreds of thousands of, of cold emails at this point uh, for our clients, like what works and what doesn't. Um, one is you definitely need to be targeted and purposeful with what you're doing. So it starts with your ideal client profile you need to know exactly who you're reaching out to and it needs to be segmented. Yeah. You can't like when someone says our solution is industry agnostic, it just drives me crazy. <laughs> um, it's, you know, that's like going to a primary care physician. If you have cancer, 
like they're not going to be able to help you with that. Like prospects really want specialists. Mm. So the big thing that you need to do um, is to create that segmentation and the ideal client profile need, it can't just be, we work with SaaS companies. It has to be, we help B2B SaaS companies under a thousand employees that use this type of software. Like that's how specific it needs to be. Right. That segmentation is going to allow you to really present a case that's very specific for the person you're reaching out to without you having to do a lot of personalization. Yeah. So if you're working with SaaS companies, let's say that you help them, um, we work with nonprofit. I'll just use this as an example. We work with nonprofits and then we also work with companies that sell professional services. Right. Well, those are three very different types of companies. They all have very similar needs, but how they talk about their needs, like a nonprofit wants to grow their impact. They don't say revenue, right? Mm -hmm. Just little things like that. And then we can create three different sequences uh, or cadences, we call them, that have messaging that's very specific to that industry and that type of account. Mm. The second part that's really important that I don't see people taking the time to do is know the persona too. So once you've identified the ideal client profile and you have a big list of companies, we separate the personas in two. And uh, this is a concept, I think it's William Miller that came up with it. Uh, he wrote a book called Selling Above and Below the Line. Okay. So the line, if you visualize a horizontal line is where the decision is made. The above the line is your, uh, excuse me, your C-level and VPs. And then below the line is your managers and directors. Mm. The line, typically companies and organizations make decisions together as a team. So the C-level person might be the person that signs off on it, but they're really looking for the person that's in the weeds yeah. in most scenarios to really champion your product or service. Mm, absolutely. So the reason why it's important to separate those two in messaging is, Above the line is very strategic in thinking. Below the line is very, uh, they're the tacticians. Those are the ones executing things. So if I'm telling a, a C-level person, I'm selling prospecting solutions and I say, hey, try these 10 subject lines with your team. They're going to be like, I don't even know what subject lines are, guys are using. Um, you need to talk to our director or yeah. the sales manager that's working the floor. So the content and the value props and we can go into a ton of detail here, but that's really the 10,000 foot view of like, you need to separate those. Yeah. You can't use generic messaging across multiple types of companies or across multiple types of personas. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I, I've been trained uh, in a previous part of my career. I was trained in a methodology called Miller Hyman. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, the it it is it's not necessarily a, of an above the line below the line methodology. However, it is about uh, segmenting who you're uh, talking to and trying to figure out are they technical buyers, are they users, are they uh, economic yep. buyers, and so on. And I guess really a, uh, above the line is considered an economic buyer. Uh, a below the line are users and technical buyers, and so on. Right. Yep. Um, so yeah, no, I really like it. So what you're saying is that you customize your message uh, to who you're going, who you're actually talking to so that you can get to really what their individual buying motivations could be. Um, and, you know, you kind of play it out uh, so that if you're talking to a C-level person, you maybe are, are talking to them from the perspective of obtaining them being a champion for you and then recommending that you talk to somebody below the line. Uh, and when you, I find when you talk to a C-level person and then they rec they refer you to the person below the line, it comes with a lot more weight. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. 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 And I, I definitely want to encourage people to reach out to both because there's like, there's this common, I think, misconception that like top down is the only way to go. Right. And if you're reaching out to a company with a thousand people, I'm sorry, like the CMO is just not going to hop on, likely hop on a, a sales call with someone they don't, they might not even be, their assistant is probably like scanning through their emails to check for cold emails like that. So you yeah. got to do both. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're right. And and so if you're selling a piece of software that's very much lined up, let's just say for argument's sake, there's a, a division of an organization called the Enterprise Architecture Group and you've built a very customized or a very solution focused piece of software that is for that particular niche of the business, 
you're really not even going to talk to uh, the CEO about that. Uh, you yeah. may talk to the CTO, uh, but I would argue you would talk to the director of EA, Enterprise Architecture, would yep. be likely who you'd want to talk to initially anyway. Uh, yep. And he'd probably want you eventually to talk to the CTO. Um, cool. So where does video sit in with all this? Uh, you know, cause I, I feel like, you know, certainly when you and I connected initially video, your use of personalized video really resonated with me. So video takes place in a, in a couple different ways. And essentially the reason why we started getting really into video is that, you know, companies like Vidyard and, and Loom, uh, especially Vidyard, cause they've made a lot of content on this. They originally came out as a marketing tool. So it was like a way to send, like in a newsletter blast, you could put a video in there and then get stats on it. And of course, salespeople started using it and figuring out that, hey, I could send one-to-one -one videos with this. So Vidyard started coming out with a lot of great content. And what they talked about was a challenge that we were seeing in that we would send emails to people and we'd use our tools and we could see that people were opening up emails dozens of times, but not responding. Mm. And the reason that we concluded was that you know, people get busy, they forward emails around, it just gets lost in translation. And if you're just sending another email, it's like just a, getting another email that gets shoved down in the bottom of the mix. So video was a way to sort of send like a, almost like a video voicemail uh, where you can get the prospect to, it's kind of like take that extra little step yep. to get them over the edge of committing to a phone call. Mm. So we use video in two ways. So the reason why it's so important to know who you're reaching out to on the persona level, especially, is that's going to dictate what you say in the video. But we use it in, in two ways. So one, if you have a list of like dream clients and you've separated out and you said, hey, these 50 companies have logos that I want to work with and the rest, you know, like we'll just throw in like our normal prospecting flow. You might lead with a video in that case. And where we're using it in most cases is we wait we send a couple emails to someone and we only send personalized videos to people that actually open the emails. Ah. That way, and this is a good prospecting hack, you really need to prioritize your prospects. Don't treat everyone equally. Like don't spend a lot of extra time calling or recording a video for someone if they're not even opening up emails that you're sending. Mm. Because you should have a 50 plus percent open rate. So in theory, half the people you're reaching out to are at least opening your emails. Yes. yes. So the video in terms of what to say, and this is, I forgot to share the link earlier when you asked me. It's, yeah, it's Blissful I, Prospecting. <laughs> I recognize that. Throw it in now. It's uh, blissfulprospecting.com slash Chris. Okay. And it has a guide and it's going to go more in depth with what I'm about to share you. So it'll tell you like what tool to use, what to say, steps for setting it up. And it only takes like five minutes to set awesome. it up. Awesome. That's great. So in terms of what to say in the video, there's, there's a couple of, well, let me backtrack. Uh, before you even figure out what to say, there's a couple sort of visual things that you need to do with video. Um, one, what we use is a, a whiteboard. You can use a piece of paper. When you send a video, it's going to embed a thumbnail into the email. Ideally, you want that thumbnail to be you holding up a piece of paper or a whiteboard with the person's name and then like waving and smiling. <laughs> so the big mistake I see people there with the thumbnails is they look so serious. And like the whole point of video is to showcase your personality. So you got to smile look friendly, look inviting, et cetera. And then when you're recording the video, there's two things that will make a huge difference. One, like there's a huge difference between looking into the camera versus looking at your screen. When you look into the camera, the person feels like you're talking to them because it feels like you're making eye contact mm. versus looking at the screen. It feels like you're talking to a screen. It doesn't feel very personable. Right. And the second thing is I would definitely invest in a webcam of some sort, they're really cheap. Like you get a Logitech like HD webcam for like 45 bucks is the yeah. one I'm using right now on this yeah. call. And that'll be plenty good enough. So once you do that, when you record the video, you want to keep it under 60 seconds, ideally around 30 seconds. So the format is I'm going to share, you know, Hey, who I am, why I'm reaching out and then why we should talk, right? Some, some sort of call to action. So what that might sound like, I'll just give you an example. Like if I'm sending a video to like a nonprofit, it might sound like something like, um, hey, Chris, uh, wanted to mix it up a little bit here and send over a quick video to you. Uh, first off, I, I want to say that what you're doing at your nonprofit is really cool for this reason. And I was reaching out because we noticed that a lot of the nonprofits that we work with have challenges scaling up their corporate outreach. Mm. So I wasn't sure if this is a challenge you're having. 
But if you're wanting to get more exposure through like corporate partnerships and need some help in that area, we might be able to help you out. If you're interested in scheduling a call, let me know. I'll send over some times to you and a link. And if now is not a good time, that's totally okay as well. Uh, regardless, keep up the good work. I'll talk to you later. Love you know, it. something really quick like that. Yeah. You can tell I've been doing these a lot too. It's just, uh, but it's like practice makes perfect. Yeah. You're yeah. going to be super uncomfortable doing this if you've never done it before. And once you do it four or five times though, you're going to get the hang of it. So repetition really is, is everything. But that's a, that's a quick rundown of like what to say and just a couple of best practices. Yeah, in, in doing no, I love it. And that's exactly what you did. And maybe if you're cool with it, I'll, uh, is it, does it make sense? I'd love for, you, for me to just sort of in the show notes, build a bit of a case study as to how you got on my show because you yeah. got on my show using this exact tactic. You had the, uh, you had the whiteboard, hi, Chris. <laughs> that's what yep. caught my eye and what made me open it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, anything I can do to help, uh, you know, reps or business owners that are selling do this, like it's so powerful. And if you can get over the fear and anxiety of doing it just by practicing a bunch of times, yeah, it's really effective because I've only ever received one email, uh, cold email with a video in it. And I was immediately impressed. All the I other have, stuff I've gotten are, have no personalized, like none, no yeah. personalization outside of my name and company name. Yeah, you, uh, you're the only one uh, that I can think of that, uh, that has sent me that personalized uh, video and uh, it's just hugely, hugely impactful. And I know from my clients on the consulting side, sales growth consulting, uh, it's, you're, you're, at, you're on the front end of a wave. And so uh, I know mm -hmm. people, there's, there's certainly a, a, more people are thinking about doing it, uh, but we, we're not at a point of saturation yet. So for people listening who want to get in on this on the front end and leveraging this personalized approach, I really recommend certainly to reach out uh, blissfulprospecting.com slash Chris and download that uh, free file um, because it works. And I'm a perfect example of how it works. You got, you're here on the show because of a video. <laughs> um, so... Any further, uh, you know, do we, do we want to go any further with this cycle? So you, you have your prospect, you have your, um, I guess it's your, it's, and excuse me, the words, uh, you have your prospect list, the personas, uh, you, and sounds to me like, so correct me if I'm wrong, you're suggesting uh, you send emails, just regular emails, and you observe, are they being opened? Uh, if they're being opened, you then suggest possibly, and, and of course, this is all determined. Uh, I mean, everyone's businesses are different, but the, you know, if they open, you send the personalized video, which promotes jumping on a call. Uh, is there anything, is that where you and your expertise kind of end? Uh, is there anything else you'd like to share further down the funnel? Yeah. So really, I think what you're asking about, it sounds like it's like, what should the cadence look like? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so there's some industry dependent things here, but I'll give you just sort of a general guidelines when building a cadence. Okay. So uh, insidesales.com, they have some really good uh, reports because any company that provides sales engagement uh, software, they have all of this great data on like what their people are using and like what works. Hmm. I was just really uh, interested in this uh, study that I was reading yesterday, actually. And what they talked about, the whole study was about cadences. And what we've seen to be effective is something over the course of two to three weeks. So 14 to 21 days in total. And then over that time, what you're going to do and what we've seen success with is you're going to send six to eight emails over that time. So in those emails, I recommend at least one personalized video. And then what you also want to do is throw in some phone. So mm -hmm. you at least want to do three phone calls mm -hmm. and we can, you know, sort of talk about what to say and all that other stuff, but, but typically you're going to get a voicemail. <laughs> yes. So, so you're going to need to leave a voicemail. Um, so in terms of like, if you wanted to keep it really bare bones and simple, I would just pair phone and email and I would start with two emails and then I would start calling after that. And you're going to call based on people you see opening and engaging with emails, same way with personalized video. And if you want to get really fancy, you could also throw social in there too. Got so it. you could throw in, um, a connection request on LinkedIn. I, I don't like using Idmail because it's it's so salesy and and, right. and and typically people are on guard with that. Yeah. But again, 14 to 21 days over the course of that time, you're going to have eight to 12 touches, six to eight of those being email, three of them being phone, and then a couple touches on social. 
Got it. Where, where, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, any hack or thought on where do you get the email address to begin with? Uh, good question. So we use a couple different variations. So if, if you're doing this on a shoestring budget or you just want to test it out to see if it works, Apollo.io is a really great resource. They have, uh, I think they give you a thousand free leads getting okay. started. And it's essentially LinkedIn sales navigator on steroids. So you can do oh. all the account-based searches, the persona searches, um, you can set trigger events, all, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, the other thing that, that we use primarily, if, especially if you're an individual that's needing to do this and you're not outsourcing it, is LinkedIn Sales Navigator uh, paired up with Lead IQ. Okay. So essentially what you can do is, yeah, Lead IQ. Okay. Um, essentially what you can do is, like when you're on LinkedIn, you can just go to someone's LinkedIn profile, load up the Lead IQ Chrome extension, and all their information just pops up. Uh, that they wow. have in their database. So I like to do two things. I want to have, be able to build a list and like, and be able to approach people like in bulk, so to speak, and then personalize that list and send it out. But I also like if I'm on LinkedIn and I come across someone I want to reach out to, I want to have something ready that I can send them. Yes. So lead IQ is going to be able to get that information for you real quick. And you can throw it into your cadence for whatever tool that you're using. Got Those it. are the true primary things that I would suggest if you're really advanced, you, know, you could use like Discover Org and some of these more expensive platforms, but Apollo and Sales Navigator combined with LeadAQ are going to be the best bet probably to get started. Got it. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, these are phenomenal sort of quote-unquote hacks. Uh, how does this tie back to your primary business? And I'm just trying, I want to make sure, so people will download your worksheet, but also uh, if people are listening, they like what they're hearing, uh, who is your ideal client to work with and how can they reach out and have a conversation with you to figure mm -hmm. out if maybe partnering with you uh, makes sense? So we primarily work with people in two different ways. Uh, we have done for you prospecting, which we're starting to move away from more. So we have sort of limited availability with that. That's us doing everything up to the point of the introductory call. So the list building, messaging, all that good stuff. Uh, we've really due to high demand, been moving more towards a training model. So we have two types of uh, training. So if you're a company and you're, let's say that you're the owner and you're selling or you have a sales team or whatever it might be, uh, we have a program called the Prospecting Accelerator. So in 90 days, uh, we do an intensive program where we take uh, you and your team through how to develop uh, your ICPs, your personas, how to develop messaging, building list, build, uh, list building workflows, best software to use. We help you build the cadence, work on your messaging, your value props, everything. And the goal there is that you're going to get a lot of one-on-one -on -one work with your team so that you can learn how to do this yourself and be self-sustaining, which I recommend for companies. It, it's making more and more sense for companies to learn how to do this in-house rather than outsource it because it's such a critical component of your business's growth. Yeah. And then we also work with the individual rep. Same sort of scenario. It's just geared more towards the individual. Yep. 90 day program. You get to work with us one on one. We're going to have some group uh, type of stuff that we're doing here soon, but really just one on one help with like, how can you implement this stuff? And then once you start, how can you get feedback? Because most of the time, prospecting, I'm sure if you ex experienced this, you don't hit a home run when you do it the first time. No, There's usually right. has to be a lot of iterations. You got to work on your messaging. People are going to tell you they're not interested or that they're not a good fit. And there's targeting that you got to work on. So, those are the two primary ways. Um, that working with you know, either companies or, or individual reps. And you really need to be, uh, you know, obviously selling a business to business product or service. Mm -hmm. um, if you're selling professional services or anything that's retainer based, um, if you're a tech company selling you know, software, like that sort of thing, stuff, we can help you guys out. And we also work with nonprofits as well. Yeah. Love it. That's awesome. Uh, I really appreciate you coming on the show. What's the, maybe I'll get you to repeat again, the way, for, well, how can people learn more from you? I'm assuming it's blissfulprospecting.com. Are you uh, predominantly on any social me media platforms where people should link up with you? Yeah. The only social platform we really use extensively is LinkedIn, yeah, uh, just because that's where business reps are living uh, and business owners especially. Uh, so yeah, definitely connect on LinkedIn. Uh, it's just, just type in Jason Bay, Blissful Prospecting. I try to once or twice a week post either a helpful video or I've been doing what people have really been liking is cold email breakdowns. So okay. I'll take the cold emails that I get, take a screenshot, blur out the person's name and company, 
and then just give them tips on like what to do better. Yeah. Ways so there's a lot of, that's like a great way that on our newsletter and our website are a great way to just get free stuff. That's going to be really helpful. Yeah. And then obviously that PDF is going to be really good. If video sounds like something that you want to do as well. Yeah. Sounds awesome. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the show. This has been a real eye opener for me. Uh, just your name, you mentioned a number of tools I need to check out. Uh, and I'm looking forward to continuing the relationship with you. Definitely. Thanks, Chris. All right. Thanks for listening to the It's Time to Sell podcast at chrisspurvey.com.